We're getting somewhere. All right. All righty, legends. I think we can finally get started. To start things off, I'll take a look at the Bitcoin chart with the MDX, ELGO 3, and Oscillator 5 indicators. Uh, if anyone has any questions about the indicators, I'll do my best to answer them. I don't always have the answers, but I'll try. Um, and yeah, I'll gladly take altcoin requests, check out that sort of thing if you guys want. Um, other than that, if you are going to have a bunch of background noise for whatever reason, phone calls and stuff, just make sure that you put your microphone on mute. I know uh, last week that uh, a couple of people were complaining that there was some people with a lot of noise and they were having a hard time hearing me. If that's an issue, you can always go ahead and mute them on your own. So there is that. Um, other than that, welcome. I'm glad you guys were able to come hang out. I know we're all from very different time zones. I know uh, my time zone is much different from the other guys in the group. Um, but yeah, and also bear with me if uh, my throat kind of starts to give out on me. I'm pretty sure I have a mild case of COVID right now. Um, but that's not going to stop us. I want to look at charts and I want to talk to you guys about charts. So um, yeah, just starting off, looking at the daily chart here. Um, I know this was kind of a big dump and it was fairly scary to a lot of people. I'm still not overly worried about it. Um, I know that this was a lot of downside volatility. We still do have this long support line on the ELGO 3 holding. It is looking a little weak, I'll give it that. This was, I mean, this was quite a big engulfing bearish candle, obviously, so it may carry some momentum to the downside. And really, if we do end up dropping this green support box, I mean, it would be nice if we just got one quick uh, fake out wick and reclaim it. I think that would be showing us a bit of a bear trap. And I think we could actually be in a good position if that happened. But we have to also consider that the markets are very uneasy right now. And uh, there's obviously the chance that people have stop losses uh, on the way down here. Um, obviously, if you're like me, you would rather be spot buying on the way down. But there is a lot of people who will be scared, especially with leverage positions. I mean, this thing could absolutely dump off a cliff, especially if we do end up uh, getting a clean break below this and respecting this old support as resistance. Uh, that's where I would start to get a little worried if we started to actually just kind of struggle tapping away at this without just getting right back up above this box. Um, but until that happens, support is support, obviously. Um, and where we got rejected isn't all too bad either. Um, if you guys have been following along, I've probably mentioned on this stream quite a few times and definitely have mentioned on my own YouTube channel that... I didn't really want to see a break of this downward sloping uh, purple trend line here until we had a third rejection. I don't take trend lines too serious if there's only two touch points, but now we obviously just got our third one. So to see the reaction right there, uh, seeing the rejection from the bears there, not all too surprising. It did catch me off guard a little bit. I wish I would have locked in a little more profits from my long position. Um, but you know what? I did have a great trade from here. Uh, I think it was 19345 was my long and basically rode it all the way up. Um, I did mention as well that if we ended up dropping this 21.1 approximately, uh, this was kind of what I was looking at for our higher low. Um, obviously once we broke above this little trading range here, that confirmed that this area did act as a higher low. But uh, as soon as we actually drop that level, that's kind of where the structure in this chart changes. So as soon as we lost that level, I wasn't all too surprised to see us just start dumping. But uh, like I said, it's not all doom and gloom. There is still, uh, especially if I go to the daily chart here, uh, I don't know how many of you guys were in the last stream there, but I, when I was talking about this position, I took the the ELGO indicators were a huge factor in why I took that beautiful long position. And uh, that was just kind of looking at, we had this double, bo or double bottom support box here. I don't have my RSI pulled up right now, but there was a bullish divergence there on the one day as well. And on top of that, we had both these indicators claiming a potential market bottom. Uh, that's what that symbol there means, is a potential bottom. Uh, 
quite often if you see a trend kind of trading downwards and we start to almost look like we're forming a bit of a rounding bottom quite often you'll get a whole bunch of these and generally the more green you start uh, seeing showing up it's just a little more likely that you're about to get some sort of a relief rally and same with on the upper side if you start getting a whole bunch of red obviously it's just kind of an early warning sign that there could be rejection coming in fairly soon but uh, this box does look good to me. I wouldn't be too surprised to retest it. I love drawing my support boxes like this, where I just kind of take the wicks of uh, where we've currently bottomed out and just mapping that out there. I was very vocal about the fact that when we had this green daily candle here, obviously it doesn't look green, but yeah, we had that green close. I had mentioned that I thought the next daily candle was going to come back, retest this box right around 19,000 and kind of blast off from there. And we got very close. Uh, we got to 19,003 US dollars. So that prediction played out absolutely perfectly. Glad to see that. Um, where we are right now, uh, not all too bad. Like I said, um, we did break above this resistance back here. Obviously, this whole section here, in my opinion, if we were going to carry out a bearish trend, I don't think we would have got back above the highs of this range here. Uh, the fact that we did means that we did uh, just kind of break that bearish structure. So now, especially where we're trading at right now, I mean, it, it's kind of looking like we'd be flipping this resistance into support. So that's beautiful to see, in my opinion. Um, just gonna hop over. Let's see here. Uh, another thing, actually, this indicator did call out this reversal quite well, in my opinion, because uh, we got this. So we have the oscillator five here claiming that we are clearly overbought. And on top of that, this red line connecting these two, that's showing a bearish divergence. Uh, this green dot is trying to be a bullish continuation sort of thing, but the fact that it is so high up, it's not like it's down uh, kind of around oversold territory. Uh, I, I don't like to take these signals all too serious when they're way up near overbought territory, for example. But uh, this bearish divergence obviously like played out absolutely beautifully. Uh, on top of that, with the ELGO 3, this blue dot here is also a bearish divergence. We did have this bullish divergence first, which did pump us out of this uh, continuation pattern, but then it did flip to a bearish uh, divergence there. And on top of that, we did get another take profit there. Um, so yeah, this indicator really did a great job of calling that in my opinion. And this is on the four hour guys, but uh, gonna have to see what the daily does here. So far we've respected the hell out of the moving average of this indicator. So that is nice to see. Um, as well, we did, obviously this is a fairly small one, but to go along with my potential market bottom there that I called, uh, this little green line is a bullish divergence. Can't remember if I mentioned that to you guys or not, but, and also just this, um, uh, just this bullish continuation sort of. So yes, uh, something you got to watch for with the indicator as any indicator is sometimes they're lagging. So obviously we didn't get the long signal till up here. If you're getting a, a long signal kind of right when you're trading into resistance, uh, it's not That's always not the, the most, uh, I guess, reliable, if you want to call it that. Same with if it gives you a short signal, but you're already trading into support. Um, and quite often that is the case, guys. With trading, it's always going to be a patience game. Um, obviously, we all want to degen trade. We want to do 20 trades a day and become millionaires within a month or two. Uh, unfortunately, it's not realistic. Uh, this is just meant to be an indicator. Uh, I don't go and take every single signal that it gives me or anything like that. I always want to do my own technical analysis and kind of hope that the indicator lines up with that. So, and just going back to that, that's kind of what I was talking about with this daily double bottom. Uh, if I had the RSI up, it would show a beautiful bullish divergence. So that's kind of where I already had my mind fairly convinced that we were actually quite bullish. And just to see that potential market bottom come into play at an area that I was interested in longing already, it was just kind of confirming my bias there. So. Um, not just going off these long signals, but just going off of a uh, confluence of things. And uh, 
I do have many reasons why I think that Bitcoin's actually more bullish than a lot of people do think. Uh, I'm going to go into that with this Bitcoin cheat sheet a little later. Uh, for those of you who were tuned in last time or maybe you've seen it on my channel or something like that, uh, this might be a little bit repetitive, but uh, I did notice something else in that chart yesterday, which I want to talk about, um, but I'll get to that a little later. Um, for now, I guess starting off, does anyone have any questions? Uh, a couple more things I want to talk about with this indicator, uh, just because I don't know everyone's trading experience levels or anything like that. Um, to get into the settings, you can either double click on any of the signals on the indicator or you can right click and go to settings that works as well. And that's where you have a whole bunch of customization with this indicator. I absolutely love it. Honestly, I love the colors more than anything. I'm a simple man. I, <laughs> I really like my colorful charts. But uh, one thing that is really neat with this indicator, in my opinion anyways, uh, something that I haven't seen any other indicator do, and they're probably out there. I just like to keep my trading simple, so I try not to load up too many indicators. But this support resistance is an interesting feature to me, just because, once again, don't know everybody's uh, levels as far as trading goes and how familiar you are with it. But it basically just maps out important levels that would be support resist flippy kind of areas. And... I personally don't really use this too much because I just like my own analysis. I have my own back-tested um, scenarios, I guess we'll call it. My own back-tested patterns that I like and that sort of thing. So I like to map out my own lines. But anyone who's new to trading, I mean, you're just looking for a helpful set of eyes. Or even, let's say, a guy like me, I take a break from the charts, I go on holidays, or I end up... Uh, all traders go through uh, winning and losing streaks. So let's say I'm going through a losing streak. I'm looking at things incorrectly. It doesn't hurt to bring up that portion of the indicator just to kind of outline some important levels for you. Uh, so I think that's absolutely just wonderful. I think that's super cool. Even though I don't use it, it's uh, one of the coolest things that I've seen on this indicator. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask about any of these uh uh, customizations. One thing I will point out very quickly before that is uh, if you're on regular candles like me, make sure you uncheck the Heiken Ashi calculation box here. If you're on Heiken Ashi candles, then uh, keep that checked. And uh, other than that, make sure that your visual order is set to bring to front. I've heard that some people have had a little bit of visual issues or just things don't look very clean and they're wondering why mine looks so crisp and clean. Uh, sometimes that'll be the reason there, so make sure it's uh, brought to the front there. Um, but yeah, with that, I will open up the floor to anyone who has any questions about the indicator or my analysis or anything like that. Uh, is it still worth longing low time frame? Let's dive right in. How low are we talking? 15 minute, 5 minute... five to 15 the 15 minute here oh there we go did get a long signal but you can see that i mean it did trade right into resistance basically our lower high right now even on a micro time frame here is kind of this box right here is what i would be looking at for resistance because yeah just after we kind of broke these lows and that after we kind of broke below this low here um, obviously this is our lower low and then once we broke down below this so just earlier back here uh, that's confirming our lower low so our highest point between those lower lows would be this box up here so that's kind of what I'm looking at for the lower high area on this very micro time frame obviously so that's kind of where I would want to see Bitcoin get back above uh, would be right around that 20,500 uh, give it a little wiggle room for a little higher there but uh, that's kind of where I'm looking at for resistance right now so I'm I mean I could be very wrong on this we could absolutely just blast off right now but uh, I'm not willing to take a long right now I actually just closed a couple positions one was uh, long on Cardano and another one was a long on Soul that I took earlier today 
uh, closed both of those in a profit already because they were also coming up to structure like this um, on a very micro time frame, by the way. Uh, Solana on the four hour obviously looks very different, but I'll, I'll get into altcoins later. I will kind of go over what I was looking at in the position I took there as well. Um, but yeah, as far as the 15 minute goes, um, it would be nice, like, yeah, we did kind of clear this little bit of resistance here if you really want to kind of microanalyze things. Uh, I would like to see the price kind of come back. If we start finding support there, uh, flipping that resistance into support and also lining up with this long indicator, I mean, then you'd have a little bit better entry. And at least if you were to get stopped out, you would uh, minimize your risk a little bit. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Still in a long on BTC from 19.670. Nice, nice. That's still a very good position. Um, I wish I was still in my one from 19.3. <laughs> Just uh, be nice to have that little bit of wiggle room. But yeah, I'm not in any positions right now, actually. Hopefully I'll find something tonight, but not going to be in a rush to find anything here. Six times leverage. Yeah, and honestly, when you say only six times leverage there... Um, that's probably a smart idea. I, uh, I myself use fairly high leverage a lot of times, kind of depending what time frame I'm trading on. Um, if I'm on a, a lower time frame, I do tend to use a lot higher leverage. I actually, I use 69 times leverage on my 19.3k position there. <laughs> the, uh, the next morning when I woke up, my position was at like a 640% or something like that. I only had like wow. a quarter of the position still open. Um, and it wasn't a crazy position because like when I'm putting that much, that stupid of a number, of leverage i'm obviously taking that into consideration and using a lot less margin on that um i still consider bankroll management i just uh you know how we are dgens in the group a little bit i thought it would be funny yeah. to do 60 I, i'm quite new to it so i've been wrecked a few times so i just stick to the lower leverage like <laughs> oh yeah yeah no honestly the way i started trading um, I didn't even use leverage, uh, the way I learned how to trade. And actually when I got into trading Bitcoin, I first, I made my first Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum purchase right here, right about there. I think I was three days from the all time high. <laughs> so I, I learned some valuable, <laughs> learned some valuable lessons here. Um, on top of that, of course, I wasn't only holding Bitcoin and those higher alts. I was also, you know, figured XRP is a good idea and all those random coins. Uh, so yeah, absolutely got a little wrecked, but uh, I learned how to trade in the process. I had no market experience before that, but I did understand market cycles and that I knew that it wasn't going to zero like you kept hearing. I knew that, you know, you zoom out and look at the chart. It has these pullbacks. Uh, these corrections are nothing to be scared of. Uh, I mean, obviously they are a little scary, but um, they're normal, I guess is what I'm getting at. So the way I learned how to trade on the way down is I was holding these shit coins, as I'm going to call them, like Tron and XRP. <laughs> and uh, I learned rather than shorting, I just learned to try and if I figured that there was a break in structure or anything and we were going to dip a little lower, I would try and just sell a percentage of my coins and I would buy them back whenever. As long as I could buy back more, I considered it a win. Even if my account was way down, I would consider that a win because you know what? You you won the trade. You got more of what you were trying to get, whether that's US dollars or oh, coins or Bitcoin, whatever. Um, so it just kind of helped me keep my my uh, emotions out of it. Uh, being I didn't want to be attached to a dollar amount and figure I'd be sick to my stomach thinking of how much money I'm losing. So that's kind of how I did yeah. it there. It was just spot trading. So that's how I learned. So when you say six times leverage, that's probably a very good idea to keep it below. Uh, I've just been learn learning a wee bit, just to get a bit more experience now. I've just been buying spot every yeah. day, Bitcoin like yeah. the best way to do it. Yeah. yeah, no, perfect, perfect. Yeah, no, it sounds like you got a good head on your shoulders that you're not going straight into the old uh, 100x trading. I, I know it's very uh, it's very tempting to make that quick money. And you know what? 100x trading, 
if you're you know eyeing up support levels as long as you're using a very small amount of margin again always just considering the fact that you need to be able to be wrong in these markets many many times not just once or twice right so uh, that's something to consider there um, especially when i can't see in front of my screen all day as well because i'm doing 14 hour shifts <laughs> oh chef. yeah yeah definitely <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I look at charts way too much, <laughs> honestly. Uh, so at least I, I, kind of, I can throw these six eggs and just leave it all day and not have yeah. to worry about it, fucking getting liquidated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like exactly. Pete. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, um, that's kind of my opinion on leverage and how I got started trading and all that sort of stuff anyways. Um, yeah, as far as altcoins, I'll kind of go into a trade setup I was just looking at actually with Solana. First of all, um, I did call this little pump here. And when I say little, uh, once again, you guys who have been in the channel know I fucking love that 786 fib. <laughs> um, I won't shut up about it. So uh, yeah, this did get a very nice pump. Uh, we were talking about it in the stream when we were actually just down here. And I was pointing out that we did break out of this falling wedge. And yes, it was weak, but we kept respecting that resistance as support. So we were getting a nice flip. And the fact that it just kind of curled out and just started holding that 786 as support. Um, I'm sure there's bull. If you looked at the RSI, there's probably a bunch of bullish divergences and stuff like that. But yeah, it was absolutely great to see that it got a 27% pump or whatever it was from there. Uh, I never did enter a position on that. We were just talking about it in the last couple streams, so I thought I would bring it up anyways. Uh, the trade I did take, let's see if I can find it here. Um, I had some sort of a downward sloping trend line. How did it go? Yeah, something like that. So I was looking at this resistance point. Uh, it was being respected quite a bit. Obviously, it was. Uh, it kept kind of respecting that resistance, testing away, and eventually got above it. And since it did have more than three touches, even though they're not spaced out perfectly, um, I just kind of figured that there was chance for at least a little pump to kind of retest these lower highs over here. And that's once again, uh, since this was our low high, and after we broke it, was back here. And we haven't actually broke below that high yet, or that low, sorry. So the lower high that we have is right here because that would be the highest point between our last two lows. Uh, just a little lesson on market structure there. I know a lot of people would kind of think, well, no, this is your new low, right? Um, but that's not really how it works. Um, so this is the area I was looking for. And so I entered a long position here. I did go 50x because I had a very tight stop loss. I was just looking to get stopped out just basically below this structure here. So it would have been a 20 or 25 or wait, what was that? It was actually, yeah, I don't know. That would have been a 30% loss or something like that. Whatever math is hard. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I had a tight stop loss. So I was using pretty high leverage and a very small amount of margin again because it was a stupid amount of leverage. Uh, but I took profits basically as soon as we hit this box here. Just looking at, you know what, we haven't set a higher high yet. That's our resistance. So if we got to it, I was thinking we're probably going to struggle at it a little bit. So rather than leave a stupidly high leverage position open, that's where I decided to close all of it. So that's what I was looking at there. Um... Any of you guys have any other questions, either about the indicator or my analysis or altcoin requests, anything? How does taking profit work? Um, I'm not sure what you mean there. Like I, it, basically to take profit, you would do the exact opposite of how you entered a position. So if I entered a long position, which would also be a buy position, you'd be looking to sell the same amount or short the same amount, would close your order. Um, or usually, like I know with Bybit, how I, when I, I always use Bybit for my trading, um, you can just click on your position and you can click close. I think it's close buy, it says. And uh, you can actually choose how much of the position you want to close to. There's percentage buttons or you can type in an, an amount manually. Um, hopefully that's what you were getting at. Hopefully I didn't confuse you.
So he's typing here, we'll just give him a sec. Uh, take back your initial investment plus the fees. Yeah, I mean, and that's another thing to keep in mind. The more leverage you use, the more fees you're going to be that are going to be digging into your profits or just adding to your loss if you're wrong on a position, obviously. Um, so what I do personally anyways, and I've learned this from uh, watching traders like, uh, I don't know how many of you follow like, uh, well, obviously MDX. I know I've seen him like, oh, I've closed part of my position here, letting the rest run or whatever. Um, I know I also follow Sammy Loyal for flies and I kind of learned from him. I was in his VIP and I kind of learned from watching him trade how he would be fairly quick to start locking in profits and updating stop losses to break even just so that you at least lock something in, you cover your fees. Like I usually try and lock in half my position fairly quickly, honestly. And then from there, I'll slowly scale out of my position. And quite often, I'll do the opposite getting into a position, right? I will... Um, ladder in entries let's say I want to let's say I figure the price is going to drop back to this line to retest it but I'm not sure it's going to get there I might FOMO and start laddering in positions on the way down so that if we do drop at least I get a better entry somewhere kind of in the middle between all my entries uh, just helps to reduce risk a little bit not to be confused with doubling down tripling down quadrupling down on your order obviously it should be pre-planned you have an amount that you want to put on your position you should always know how much money you're gonna lose if your position goes wrong um, but yeah I like to ladder into positions I like to ladder out because honestly I don't like to close full positions generally unless I'm looking at a degenerate snipe because for one I don't want to miss these runners um, like this trade from or where where am I here yeah, this trade from 19.3 that I took. Um, if I would have closed at my first level of resistance that I was looking at, I mean, I probably would have missed <laughs> this entire move. And on top of that, and honestly, probably even the bigger thing for me is if I can let a position ride, it means I don't have to find a new position. Finding a new position always adds risk. Uh, you're obviously at risk to take a loss as soon as you're taking a new position. And quite often what people love to do is over trade. So letting a position run and just scaling out on the way up is just a good way to avoid those unnecessary trades when you're just getting antsy and you want to get in the market just because you feel like gambling. Uh, it kind of helps prevent that because you can still watch that. Oh, hey, I'm still in a trade kind of a thing. So that's my opinion about it anyways. Oh, yeah, answered your question already there. So what do you think about the Ethereum merge that's happening tomorrow morning then? That Ethereum merge? Yeah, should we take a look at Ethereum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think it's happening in like seven hours or something, is it not? Yeah, something like that. I think it's 8 a.m. our time. Uh, it was seven hours, I think. Okay. Um just take a look at Ethereum here, do a little freestyle mapping out. I can tell you already, I actually like where uh, Ethereum has bottomed so far. And once again, just kind of go into those uh, resistance support flips. I mean, it doesn't get much more important than a full market cycle all time high as far as a resistance level. So I think the fact that we're coming back down or that we came back down and tested this level rather, um, that's beautiful to see in my opinion and especially right now even you can see if I zoom in here where we're starting to find support a little bit higher basically bang on that box as well so that's super cool to see uh, the oscillator 5 is suggesting that it might be a little bit overbought so that is something to consider let's check the algo 3 here we are sitting right on a long signal Something else that I really like about the ELGO 3 and these long signals, actually, um, is it's it kind of helps me spot a trend. I mean, when you see long signals getting higher, it's really just uh, a reminder that we're starting to set higher lows. 
and especially like if we would get a short signal our next short signal somewhere up here that would just be a confirmation that we're setting higher lows and higher highs so sometimes looking at uh, the indicator that way is just kind of helpful if you're having a hard time spotting a trend or whatever like obviously here the short signals were getting lower the long signals were getting lower and now we're starting to see the long signals go to the upside here so that's just another thing that I really like about these signals is it really just helps keep that clear uh, for, for my eyes I guess um, have you tried trading the supply and demand strategy seem to have a pretty high hit rate in my short experience I honestly don't know what the supply and demand strategy is um, I'd be interested to hear about it if you have either a video to post that explains it well or if you can explain it well um, I'm I'm not familiar with that supply and demand strategy I also want to make it clear guys that I'm not a fundamental guy so when I look at Ethereum and the merge I have no idea how it's gonna affect the markets uh, just I don't know the way I see it if the market dumps they're going to blame it on the Ethereum merge. If the market pumps, they're going to say it's because of the Ethereum merge. Both articles are most likely ready. Behind the, the media has those articles ready. And depending which way the market's going to move after the merge, they're going to know which article that they have to post. That's kind of the way I look at news and why I honestly don't follow news. The only reason I know any anything going on in the markets as far as the economy goes and that sort of thing is just whatever I see on Twitter. Um, other than that, I am strictly technicals. I just like uh, having a puff and drawing colorful shapes. <laughs> I let the charts do the talking, because honestly, even if the news sparks, like it, it can be a catalyst. I don't want to say it's not. Like Obviously, COVID absolutely nuked all the markets across the board as soon as that hit. Um, before we entered our parabolic run, obviously. But uh, even if you missed that move, you would still see a change in market structure where you start losing the higher lows. Like, let's say, you know what? We end up starting to trade below this low back here. Um, then I would start to think, you know what? We're either going to be retesting our lows back here or even worse, the trend is changing and we're going to start dumping so even if there's news that actually affects the markets you're still going to be able to pick up on it in the charts you're just going to be a little bit late to the party but i don't know in in my experience anyways i've always lost more money if i'm trying to trade based on the news so i like to just follow the charts uh, let's zoom in on ethereum a little bit on the one hour, we do have a long signal. That's nice to see. And on top of that, we actually did get back above this little resistance. Not by much, I'll give it that, but we are starting to trade above this resistance a little bit. That could be nice. Um, let's just see what kind of a trend line we have setting up here. You can see we got a perfect third touch point there. That would have been a beautiful long entry. I wasn't watching Ethereum, and you know what? Might not have caught that anyways. There's a good chance I wouldn't have. Captain Hindsight's obviously 2020, but um, yeah, that would have been a beautiful snipe. Very pinpoint accurate there. Um. Yeah, any other altcoin requests or just uh, any opinions about anything, guys? I'm I'm curious to hear what you guys figure in the more well short to midterm here. Like, do you guys think that the bottom is in for the market in general? Do you think do you think we're just gonna absolutely nuke and hit those 10k Bitcoin targets, or do you think that the bottom's actually in? I've been very vocal thinking that the bottom is in for a couple of well, where was it? Well, I have it marked out here that I thought this was the bottom, and I'll get into that here in a couple of minutes, actually. But yeah, what's your guys' opinion about that?
no strong opinions then. Well, in that case, I can just start getting into my macro analysis and why I think that the bottom is actually in. And also, guys, actually, do me a huge favor before I forget here. Uh, if you guys are on Twitter, give me a follow. It's at uh, StuTube Trading, all one word. I don't always have time to make videos, so quite often I'll just post analysis on uh, just on my Twitter here. Uh, nailed this short call. That was quite a while ago, but I just wanted to bring that up because, I mean, there's a good example of a beautiful position that I did outline and uh, basically showed you exactly where I shorted here, and it dumped perfectly down obviously we didn't find support at my lower high here and just nuked right through right perfectly down to my next box so that was another beautiful position that played out um, and on top of that if you haven't yet also check out my youtube channel it's a small channel so i notice every subscriber every comment every like i try my best to stay up to date on that and uh, interact with all you guys i really appreciate every Every little bit of uh, communication I get on here, every little bit of interest, so be sure to check that out. Um, I have made some pretty good predictions. Here is when I had my Solana and Bitcoin breakout incoming, um, and yeah, I'll probably actually end up posting this video as well in here later tonight, so I mean, obviously you guys were here, but if you missed some of it or came late or whatever, um, I am going to try and upload these live streams from now on, so... Keep an eye on that if you aren't able to tune in at the time that they're live or whatever. Um, other than that, if you guys have no questions and no strong opinions that you want me to look into, no altcoin requests, I can go into my macro Bitcoin analysis, my Bitcoin cheat sheet, as I call it. I'm actually going to make a video about this as well, probably tomorrow. I was going to last night, but that's when my all of a sudden my... OBS started needing me to do updates and then my video drivers needed updates and a whole bunch of stuff So it was just too late. I never got around to it, but uh, tomorrow I'm hoping to upload a video about this chart here and Yeah, this is what I refer to as my Bitcoin cheat sheet and you've all probably heard of the Wall Street cheat sheet uh, This is just my own version. That's just Bitcoin specific uh, Got a whole bunch of things going on here. Hopefully I don't forget to bring any of it up um, but yeah, a whole bunch of macro factors that make me think that the bottom is actually in for Bitcoin. Uh, one huge one, again, just talking about market cycle, all time highs, flipping from resistance into support. Obviously we we're seeing a perfect resist support flip there. If that were to happen, uh, as well, this yellow trend line is almost 10 years old. We're going back to April of 2013. So a nine year long trend line and you can see it's never been broken um, obviously anything can happen we could absolutely drop this um, nothing is for sure obviously but just a very important level that i'm watching uh, on top of that if we look at the rsi here and i will zoom in at, at a couple of things here in a minute i just want to kind of keep all of this whole well you hear the when in doubt zoom out so i just want to keep this all on your radar here at the same time here um, but yeah, on top of that beautiful resist support flip, you can see on the RSI, any time that we've seen the weekly RSI get oversold, uh, that's where I have these green dotted vertical lines, and it has marked the very bottom of the market cycle every time so far. Again, obviously anything can change, and that doesn't have to mean jack shit this time, but that's something that I want to take into consideration. On top of that, I, this is what I just noticed last night actually is these little downtrend lines in the RSI kind of starting from the just the oversold line or overbought line rather um, not the very peaks of them but just where the overbought territory begins and kind of going down to where the price matches up with this downward sloping trend line. And you can see that we actually broke out on the RSI right here. So it was an early warning shot that we were going to break out and start a crazy bull market. Um, same with over here. You can see as soon as we broke that trend line on the RSI was right here. Again, just an early warning shot that we were about to break out here. And currently right now we have just in the last couple of weeks here 
broken above that RSI line. So once again, I think this is just an early warning shot that we might end up breaking this uh, downward sloping trend line in the it might be a little while. I don't want to make it sound like we're going to the moon right now or, you know, next month or anything like that. These patterns are weekly time frames. They will take a long time to play out. But uh, yeah, that RSI is a very nice bullish indicator in my uh, personal opinion anyways. Something else I want to point out would be that every bear market, we kind of get these failed support levels. We hit our all-time high. We end up dropping, forming some sort of support for quite a long time. And uh, every time we kind of tap there, we start getting bounces, but eventually it drops. We get our final capitulation, and that's where we find our true bottom. Here, same thing. We had our 2018 market cycle high or 2017, whatever. Yeah, end of 2017. Uh, we had our top. We ended up forming this infamous descending triangle, just tapping away at this support got our one final capitulation to the downside. Now what do we have here? We had this bear market support here for quite a while, and then we got our final capitulation. So that's kind of what I'm looking at there. I think that things look very good from a bullish perspective there, again, in my opinion. Uh, the one thing that I would be waiting for yet is obviously the true parabolic run doesn't start until we reclaim this failed support here. And that's just kind of why I changed the color of it. Once we reclaim this blue box, it just seems that's where the bull market really grows some legs and goes parabolic. Uh, you can see same thing happened in our, our last uh, bull market here. We did get this one fake out. I'm not going to even count that. And the reason is this was the COVID scare. That is a black swan event. I think that's one of those times, like I mentioned, where the news actually does affect the market quite aggressively. And I don't think we would have dropped this blue box had it not been for COVID. I think we would. You can see that we were already trying to find support here. I think that we would have dropped into it, started finding support, and gone parabolic from there either way. Um, so I don't want to give those wicks too much credit. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of what I'm looking at right now. If we can get back above this failed support box and reclaim this blue box here, I think Bitcoin's going to be in a very, very powerful position in that in that case. Um, and yeah, just to zoom in here to really show you what I meant with this yellow trend line. I mean, look how well this weekly candle has respected it so far. Even if we do end up dumping, I mean, it obviously it's a possibility we could end up dropping this, flip it into resistance and dump. Uh, one other thing I want to mention, actually, before I forget, this is a logarithmic chart, so it might look a little different than your guys's if you're on a regular chart. And that's the only way you can fit the entire chart in one screen. So that's why I had that. But uh, yeah, you can see that this was absolutely being respected so far. So we're going to have to see what happens there. A uh, couple of things to watch for from a bearish perspective. Oh, actually, one more. One more bullish uh, signal here. And you guys are going to laugh because it's something I always point out. If we go from our bear market bottom here to our bull market high, oh, what are the odds? The 786 lines up perfectly with where we've bottomed as well as this resist support flip box that I have mapped out. So... A lot of things going in favor of the bulls as far as the macro time frame goes, in my opinion. Again, this will change drastically if we end up dropping this box, or even this line we'll have to see. But yeah, especially this green box, if we flip it into resistance, that's where I think we can start talking about those, uh, you know, uh, 14, 12, uh, 10k price predictions. And actually, I just want to bring up a fib tool once more because I have mentioned to you guys many times as well. Uh, quite often, you'll end up seeing the 886 fib if you end up dropping the 786 just for a quick test. And that would actually be getting pretty close to that 10,000 US dollars, uh, which a lot of analysts have obviously been talking about. I just want to say, yes, it's absolutely possible we drop to those levels, but nothing has to happen. So... Uh, one thing that lines up nicely with that as well, however, from a bearish perspective is normally Bitcoin bear markets actually correct somewhere around 80 to 85 percent. And some of you may be well aware of this. Um, if we go to this bear market back here, you can see that it corrected about 87 percent. 
Uh, we got this bear market here. We corrected about 84, 85%. Even this <laughs> right here, this little crazy flash crash that it had, 83%. So Bitcoin loves to follow that characteristic of dropping between 80 and 85% in a bear market at any sort of serious correction. And uh, that's something we have to consider here is that we have only dropped 75% so far. And when I say only, obviously that's terrifying at best. But uh, to get that full 85% correction, that's not another 10%, guys. That's basically another 50% from where we're currently trading at. 85% would take us very close to that 10K target. And on top of that, obviously it does line up uh, with some nice structure here. I mean, you can see that we were obviously respecting resistance, resistance, support, well, more resistance here, I guess. So, I mean, to dump to that level, if we drop this green box, I think it's absolutely a possibility. Um, but this is one of those things where, you know what, that is how many six crazy bullish factors uh, going against one potentially bearish factor that is still on my radar as a bit of a warning sign. So we're going to have to see what happens there. The only other thing I can see that might be a problem is this 200-week moving average. Generally speaking, it has provided Bitcoin with crazy support since the beginning of time for this moving average. Uh, obviously, we needed enough data in the chart for this to form. And you can see that as soon as it did, that's basically where we got this bull market to the upside here. As well, back here, that's where we found our bear market bottom. COVID, yes, we again had our wick below it, but that would have lined up perfectly with my blue box there, and I don't think we would have dropped it without COVID. But uh, you can see we reclaimed it and found beautiful support there. And then uh, what we have now is we are struggling with that moving average a little bit. So that's something that is a bit of a warning shot fired from the bears at the bulls there. Uh, don't want to discredit this. Um, I thought that we were going to get very explosive when we reclaimed this uh, moving average as support. So the fact that we never did and we're just starting to face resistance here again, that is a little bit alarming. That being said, we do have this double bottom on a weekly scale with bullish divergences and all that. So if we do get back above this moving average again, I think that's where we'll probably see it flip into support for real this time and start trading to the upside. But once again, it's resistance right now. There's I can't deny that. So that is something to consider there. Um, yeah, I think that's about... Oh, one other thing I want to point out is to look for a bit of a bull trap if we end up just blasting off to the upside like i'm kind of predicting that well i shouldn't even say blasting off we'll probably more likely trade sideways very choppy before we get that move but um <clears throat> i want to give you guys a little bit of a warning for if we start to climb really fast fomo's gonna kick in hard and that includes all of us we're gonna get the itch to just start buying and leveraging and everything we can I think we're going to end up finding some pretty strong resistance between 49 and 50,000 US dollars. And that would be taking my Fibonacci pulled top to bottom instead. So I'm looking for resistance levels rather than support. And quite often in these, uh, well, the start of bull markets, they love to retest the 618 rejection point, as I'm going to call it and uh, getting a dump back down a pretty aggressive dump from there and not only that but it does line up with this bit of structure back here as well so i want to put that on your radar that's around yeah just under uh, somewhere around forty nine thousand us dollars somewhere in there i do think that if we just kind of blast off and get to that level we will see a fairly harsh rejection and i'm not talking about setting new lows or anything like that uh just some sort of uh significant pullback and just kind of to go over why i think that is um of course nothing has to repeat itself or anything like that but bitcoin loves to do this as well if i pull top to bottom here uh you can see that's where i remember i was actually at work and i remember getting this harsh rejection and just thinking what the hell like this was supposed to be the start of the new bull market you can see that we came in contact with that 618 and saw a harsh rejection there 
Um, if I go back to this previous market cycle here as well, pulled top to bottom, uh, you can see 618, that's exactly where we got rejected there again. So just something to keep on your radar, even if we are entering a bull market, just be aware of these Fibonacci lines. I just think there's a good chance that as FOMO's kicking in and if everyone's screaming for new all-time highs, I think we're going to see a harsh correction if we start reaching those Fib levels. And a lot of people are going to be blindsided by that. So just keep that in mind. Um, other than that, guys, that's about all I wanted to go over on this chart here. Any input on this chart or my analysis or uh, things you agree with, strongly disagree with, anything like that? What What are you guys feeling about that? No, everyone's doing good, man. That's a good wee chart to look at. Good, good information, like. Yeah, I, I uh, spent a little bit of time making this one like a month ago or something. I was just kind of looking at it and I had a few things mapped out and I was like, you know what, I should really color code this, just save this as its own chart because I think there's a lot of valuable yeah, no. information here. Just like the Wall Street cheat sheet, I think it's uh, very good to, well, again, just doing the whole when in doubt, zoom out, right? And find these repeating uh, characteristics. Of for someone new like me, it's, fucking, it's good to look at. Yeah, perfect. No, I'm glad. Uh, like I said, I'm going to make a video basically going over what I just did with this chart only, just so it's a shorter video, obviously. I'm planning to post yeah. that hopefully tomorrow on my channel, so make sure you're subscribed here to check it out. <laughs> uh, I'm already sub, man. Don't you worry. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, any altcoin requests or anything, you guys? Um, just got to catch up on the chat here for a sec. Not sure. <laughs> feel like I'm back in school watching this live stream. Keep doing that. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, thanks so much for the positive input. I, or the feedback. I really like to hear that. I'm hopefully passing on valuable information here. <laughs> hopefully MDX will keep me coming back and doing more. <laughs> Uh, open the short at the same time as a long. Um, I believe you can, and you definitely could if, let's say, you were longing Bitcoin, but then you wanted to short it against Tether, for example. They would be different trading pairs, but you would technically be trading the same thing, right? Um, you can trade opposite directions that way. Uh, I believe there is some settings that you can change. I could be wrong on this. I'm not positive because I don't do it, but I know my buddy does it on Binance. I don't know about Bybit. I think I looked into it like a year ago and you could, but I didn't want to start doing that. Uh, it can be nice to hedge your position like that, but I found that it was recipe for once again, just over trading. Uh, rather than trading 10 times when you should be trading once, you're going to be trading 20 times when you should be trading once, right? So something to keep in mind there. Uh, over trading can be very dangerous. I try not to do more than a couple trades a day. Do you lose more money when you short? Um, if you... Uh, I did 34 yesterday. Um, well, if you short, you should make money on your way down. Uh, obviously, if you're not shorting with as much, if you're shorting with such a small amount of your account that your account is losing value and your short can't keep up, um, that could definitely be a thing, I suppose. You could be losing money on the way down even in a winning trade. But uh, I've absolutely, I've had some of my best trades have been shorts because panic loves to kick in really aggressively and it can, you can really get some very quick profits if you nail a good short, I find. But uh, I love being in longs for one, it's just fun, everybody's more happier. Um, and on top of that, you're, let's say I'm longing Bitcoin, I'm accumulating Bitcoin on the way up, so you're getting more of it and the value of it is increasing on the way up. Um, so that's great, but man, there, I am not going to lie, there's something that feels so freaking good 
when the market just nukes and your account starts growing. That that's a very cool feeling when you win shorts, I find. Um, other than that, guys, I feel like I don't Oh, Ethereum's looking nice there. Look at that. It's trying to hold my box that I made there, trying to find support, already trying to eclipse this. I'm personally not taking a long right now on that just because I wasn't zoomed in and paying attention and I feel like I missed a good entry. If I did enter, it would be on a lot lower leverage for one, because this is an hourly chart. And for two, how far away would this be from here? If we were to lose this box, I mean, 2.4%, depending how much leverage you use in there. I guess if you're only using like 5x leverage or something, you're only looking at about a 10, 11, 12% loss, something like that. But yeah, if you're using heavy, heavy leverage, that could be a pretty risky stop there. How do they calculate fees? Um... I think it's just a percentage of the margin you use or maybe a percentage of your position size. I'm not positive to be completely honest. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what do I think about BTC 15 and five minute chart? Um, Oh, that's Ethereum. Let's hop over. 15 minute chart. Oh, I think I already talked about this a little bit was that we do still have this lower high. Um, just this green box, a little deceiving because it's green here. I'll just change this to make it easier on us. Uh, we do still have this resistance here. Uh, what I do like is this long, uh, the moving average here is pretty aggressively moving to the upside. So I'm hoping that if the price hits this line here, this long line, I'm hoping that it would end up pushing up through this box. If we get above this box, that's where I'm going to start looking for uh, higher lows to enter some kind of a position. Like let's say we kind of get one of these. I would be starting to ladder in positions on the way down towards our higher lows. Like let's say we break this high right here, then I would want my stop loss somewhere below our new higher low here. So I'd have a stop loss somewhere in here. This is obviously very theoretical, but uh, yeah, I would then be looking to kind of enter some longs on the way towards my stop loss there. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, as far as it goes right now, we still do have this lower high set here. Until we get above that, then we're not really setting higher lows yet. Uh, let's check out the five minute. The five minutes starting to look like it might get a short signal fairly soon. Uh, we're going to have to see what happens. I mean, if we really want to microanalyze just this very small trend here, I mean, we took out these highs. Um, then where would we have got to? Let's say kind of we stopped here. Um, then we set a new higher high, so our low would be somewhere there. So until we break that, I mean, yeah, technically we're setting higher highs and higher lows just starting back here. Uh, but this is, again, very micro analyzing. So yeah, I mean, if the price can stay above here, that's a fairly tight stop loss if you're looking to snipe something. But that's very risky, I guess. I I'm not convinced about going long here yet. Not to say it won't absolutely explode from here. Could be a great entry just because of how tight the stop loss would be there. But um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm just not convinced just for the fact that once again, we are trading so close to our resistance here. Actually, one thing I want to do is to, just on a very micro level here, would be again, just looking at some fibs. Let's look for some resistance fibs. What do you know? Rejected at the 786 there. Classic. <laughs> uh, it is nice to see that we're holding above our next fib line still. And still trying to hold this support, so that is nice. We're not getting a super hard rejection from that 786, but you can see that 
Uh, quite often, you guys know if you're following on the Discord, I just love the 786-886 kind of area. I see a lot of rejections or bounces, depending which direction you're pulling from. But uh, those fibs get respected quite well. So even if we would have got up to the bottom of this red box, I think it still would be a good chance that we start getting rejected just because it's this fib here. But uh, we're going to have to see. I mean, the bulls could be hungry. Like I outlined on a macro scale, I am quite bullish. So that might carry into some of these more micro time frames here. But I'll be more interested in starting the long pullbacks once, once we get above this resistance. And that's just kind of above 20,500. Uh, I'd probably give it a little wiggle room, like, I don't know, get above 20,550 or something, and actually closing candles above there, not just a wick and then coming back down, but actually respecting uh, respecting that resistance with a candle body close above rather than just a wick. Then I'd be interested in starting to long some pullbacks in case we start staircasing higher. Hopefully... Uh, Hopefully that's what you wanted to see on the 15 five minute there. Um, just going back here. I hopefully haven't missed any questions. I tend to ignore the chat by accident. Sometimes I hate reading. <laughs> Got someone typing here, so we'll see. Um, yeah, what else can I touch on here? What is unrealized PNL? That would be your unrealized profit and loss. So you'll have realized, that's how much profits or losses you have locked in from your position. Unrealized means that's how much profit or loss is currently sitting on your position. So guys, anyways, I was hoping to keep this kind of around an hour. I think with the late start, we're kind of getting to an hour now. Um, yeah, if no one has any other questions or input or requests, I think that's about where we'll stop it. I don't have a heck of a lot else I want to touch on. Again, uh, just do me a huge solid and check out my uh, Twitter as well as my YouTube seriously appreciate every little bit of interaction i get on either of those obviously a very small channel still no, so. i've been perfect man cheers for that perfect cheers cool that, right? well thanks so much you. for tuning in you guys i i feel like i don't get to talk crypto enough in my life not many of my friends do follow <laughs> along so i i just love talking charts looking at charts getting other people's opinions so yeah i love doing this i think it's it's such uh, a it's different not better atmosphere i get any streams so it's good like yeah I'm, I'm so used to only doing the record and post so doing it live and actually talking to people cool. i love it this is a lot of fun so i, I want to keep doing it i'm hoping to do t uh, one or two a week basically is what i'm shooting for so yeah it's just a place to come hang out no that's crypto. good man keep it up keep smashing it Perfect. Cool. Yeah, we're catching up, bro. All right. Well, guys, I think that's where I will uh, leave off. Thank you so much again for tuning in. Be sure to uh, just check out my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And uh, with that, yeah, like I said, I'm going to do a shorter video uh, re-breaking down that macro analysis I talked about just to break it down to a five or ten minute video rather than an hour long to go back and recheck. So, uh, yeah, watch for that in the next day or two. I'm pumped to make that video since I wasn't able to yesterday. Um, with that, guys, I got nothing else, so I'm going to go chill and make supper and shower and all that sort of stuff. So stay safe, my friends. And, of course, if you have any other questions, or you, I mean, I'm going to see you guys in the Discord groups anyways. I'm, I'm on there all the time. So, yeah, looking forward to, to talking with you guys a little more. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Stay safe. Peace.